So I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for all that you've been in my life. And I'm grateful for this heart-opening experience that this, this ministry is for me. And I want to share again what I said a moment ago, which is I know, and I know in my heart of hearts, and I know from experience that there's somebody waiting in the wings for you. There's someone waiting in the wings for you. There's some good waiting in the wings for you in whatever area of your life besides this church that you're making changes and transitions. I know this for a fact because in every circumstance, except for a couple where they didn't really want to do the work, but in every circumstance where people were willing to do their work, even though I felt very good about the ministry that I did, somebody came in that was more suited for the consciousness's next step. And I know that's challenging because we get an idea that this is, this is my good right here. This is my good. I could never do it without this lectern. This lectern is just exactly the size and the shape. It's exactly what I need. And then what happens? Well, if we, we fight it, we resist it, we have a hard time going through it. Remember what I said last week? Growth is optional, but change is inevitable. And so you're going to change no matter what you think. It's going to happen. Change is always going to happen. You can't stop it. But you have two ways of handling it. One is that you can grow through it, utilize the change, and engage with the change in order to grow into that next stage and that next step in your consciousness. Or you can fight against it. You can put up walls and blocks. And that's really the key, is what do you do with the anxiety that comes up with change? Remember, I always say change. I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. You know why I say that? Because I don't like change any more than you do. I mean, honestly, I struggle with it. And it's normal. You see, the barriers that come up, that we push against when we're changing, as we're outgrowing an old pattern, an old consciousness, those barriers, that, that limitation in our consciousness that we're moving through, creates and is really experienced by us as an anxiety. And what do we do with that anxiety? Managing our anxiety and our meditation. We dealt with this, and how do you do? You, you, you lift up. You, you rise up to another level. Remember what Jesus said, I am not of this world. You are of this world. I am of above. You are from below. It sounds kind of egotistical, doesn't it? But no, Jesus was really speaking about consciousness. He was saying that there are two levels from which we can operate. There's the higher level, which is already within us, that higher self, that spiritual nature. And it's waiting for you. You say... How do I find it? It's more a matter of what do you do when the anxiety comes up when you're moving into it? Because that anxiety does come up. Uh, let me just uh, share where it's been showing up in my life right now. I'm going to be downsizing from 30 years of accumulated stuff down to a smaller apartment. How do you do that? Have you ever, anybody in this room ever done that or done that for a loved one, a parent, downsized dramatically? You ever, you ever do that? And you know, the first thing, what is the first thing that comes up? I can't do it. It's just too much. It's too painful or it's too, uh, it's too much effort or it's too this or it's too that. So what do you do in a case like that? How do you manage that anxiety when it comes up? Well, I'll tell you how I mismanage that anxiety. I go to one of two extremes. You know what those two extremes are? <laughs> one is frightened immobilization. Deer in the headlights. I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm just going to be stuck because it's just too much to think about which is okay for a few hours, but you can't stay there. <laughs> the other extreme is Daffy Duck. Chicken with the head cut off, running around in my head, or perhaps out in the outer world, trying to make it all happen. What works instead? What do you think works instead? The balance, the managing the change from within, letting things be. Reality exists independent of your opinions of it. These are opinions, and moving from those opinions of it's too much, or uh, and I can't do it, or I've got to make it happen, I have to do it all by myself, and moving into the reality. And what is your reality? That you are a spiritual being <coughs> capable of some of the most remarkable demonstrations. You are that spiritual being, and that greatness of being is rising in you as individuals and as a, a congregation. And this not only is going to be a time in, that you're going to get through, it's a time that's going to grow you, and it's going to end up with results according to your willingness to put out the energy that you need to put out that are going to be greater 
than anything you're experiencing now. And I know that to be true because I've experienced it on my personal level and on the levels of the churches where I've served. And I often share this. You probably have six copies of it at home, but pick up another one. The seven steps. And of course, in uh, two and a half weeks, I'm going to teach a class on Tuesday night that's advertised as Desire in the Soul, but we're going to change it to seven steps to, for successful life transitions from gray in which you're going to be taking me up the seven steps as I've been taking you up the seven steps. As you create a vacuum, as you create an opening, these seven step questions, you just journal them out. Take a half hour, take as much time as you need to, and write the answers to the questions about your church, or about your idea about me, or, or what you think this church is, so you can let go of your limiting views, your limiting beliefs. And what is it that you're releasing? Mostly fear. Fear. You know, somebody once said that your life is inspired by your dreams but motivated by your fears. Mm -hmm. And your fears, once you engage them and release them, frees up an energy. Because energy is impersonal. Whether it's labeled fear or love, it's all energy. And once you let go of the fear part of it, then the energy is freed up to be love. And so the demonstration that we did during our meditation time, that that process that we did, that um, that prayer that we, the affirmations we were doing, that saying, you know, I lift up, I lighten up, I, I move into that higher consciousness. None of this has anything to do with me. I take none of it personally. I detach from it. Even though that may sound impersonal, what it does is it frees you up to become what? Free to love. Then you can be in love. Then you can share love. Then you can be open. So take your, your, your sheets and, and take it home. And, and I hope as many of you as possible can show up two weeks from this coming Tuesday with me. And you're going to be doing journaling in that class to the seven steps about taking your church, myself, whatever, the status quo of the seven steps, which is truly a limitation, is it not? And then as you let it go, we're going to move into a higher consciousness. And I'll be doing my work well, in there too, I've been doing it for weeks, but, but I'll be taking you and this up the seven steps. It's important for us to do that. What we're really talking about is moving from one level of consciousness to the next. Moving from what Jesus said, the lower. He said, you're from below, I'm from above. And people say, what does that mean? Below is the world. He says, you're from the world, I'm not of this world. The world of what? Circumstances. The world of opinions. You know, the world, reality exists independent of your opinions of it. Your opinions of it are sometimes useful, but they're limitations, and ultimately you have to move past them. And how do you move past your opinions to move into reality? Well, Jesus talked about it. I'm from above. You lift up out of that old consciousness into a new consciousness. You move from, get ready for it, the third dimensional consciousness, the attachment to appearances and opinions, into the fourth dimensional consciousness, which is your beingness, which is your true self, which is the nature of you that is capable of the most amazing demonstrations. And you are going to, and you are now doing it. I know that, that you, know, you have the tools. You know what to do. And it's not just about this transition. It's about all of them all of the transitions in your life. And you say, well, how, what is it I'm moving from and what am I moving to? What is the lower and what is the higher? And we put something in your bulletins this morning, uh, two pages from Jane Hart's uh, Spiritual Power Tools book. And on the left, on each of the columns, are the characteristics of the, fourth, the, of the third dimensional consciousness, the lower self the world of attachment to appearances, to things, and to opinions. And on the right, on each column, are those characteristics of the fourth dimensional consciousness, the higher self, that which is detached, that which takes nothing personally, that which says, this has nothing to do with me. I am from above. And then, what happens? You lift up into a consciousness where you are capable of bringing forth incredible changes in your life. 
I share on Sundays, Sunday after Sunday, stories of people and their healings, stories of my own experiences. Besides telling the same stories over and over again, those stories are rooted in experience. Those stories are rooted in the experience of my being and the people that I know and the people in this congregation. Somebody just shared one story with me just this last week where they were guided to stop at a, at a rest stop and they wanted to get home and they were only an hour from home. But they stopped at the rest, rest stop and there was a woman there who had locked her kids in the car and it was a hot day and she was trying to, to, to help the person and was unsuccessful. She had the feeling, such a strong feeling, the same, and she argued with this going into the rest stop because she wanted to get home. She didn't need to go to the bathroom. There was no reason for her to stop, but she did it and there was this woman and she knew that was the reason. And so what she did was she, she had the strongest feeling, call the dealership and it was a Chevy and they said, well, do you have the OnStar service? And she asked the woman, she says, no, I bought the car used. I don't have the OnStar service. And it's the strongest feeling she had. Well, well, well let me give you uh, the VIN number. And she did. The last owner had the OnStar service. They were able to make an exception and open up the car. They said, stand back, and it all opened up. And, uh, and I think the, the, license, or the license plate was a personalized license plate that says, trust God. Trust God for. So I, this just happened. I share these things with you on Sundays because these stories are real. These are real things that happen to real people no different than you. And in your life you say, well, I feel limited. Of course you feel limited. If you didn't feel limited, you wouldn't be on planet Earth growing through all of this. Change is inevitable. Growth is optional. And these characteristics will give you, well, maybe some markers. You can ask yourself, where am I? in my consciousness right now and maybe shift yourself in that way. There are so many tools that, that you have. One of, one of them besides journaling, which I'm going to suggest that you take me up the seven steps, take this church as you know it up the seven steps so you can open up something new, but also meditation. And when I came into this church I started a silent meditation. But, you know, have you heard about the happiest man in the world? University of, uh, uh, of uh, Pennsylvania studied all kinds of people and they found that people were happier to the extent that their energy was shifted from the right side where people feel mostly anxiety and they're unhappy to the left side of the prefrontal cortex. Now, you may not understand all that or they may not interest you, but just think of it as a needle that turns from here to here. This is unhappy and this is happy. And they found that the more people meditate, the more it's on the left side. We talk about happiness like it's this thing that we've got to go find. But the truth is, is that joy, the joy is in the journey. Joy is something that's innate within us. But we unlock it through meditation. And they found the happiest man in the world was a Tibetan Buddhist. He was an American. But he had it clear over on this side. And they've interviewed him. And, and he, he doesn't let circumstances dictate to him. He doesn't let circumstances dictate to him. There's plenty going on in the news today that seems to throw us for a loop. But is it reality or is it opinion? You know, there's a lot of opinion out of there. If, if you look at the world today, there's less war, more prosperity, and less violence, and less crime than at any time that's measurable in history. And that is a fact. You say, oh, that's not true. That's your opinion. What's the reality? You can lift up into reality. You see, but there's problems in the world. Of course, that's reality too. That's reality. Make friends with it, Martha Creek says. It's reality, honey. Make friends with it. And today's talk title is, If the Bed's Too Short, You're Too Tall. That came from Rick Steves. You know Rick Steves, the guy who travels through Europe and does uh, stuff on PBS? Some people heard Rick Steves. And he was once with a tour of people a few decades ago, and it was in a country where people were shorter. And it was one guy who was about six foot four, and he was really upset because in this little inn, this little lodge that they were at, the bed was too short. And he thought it was unfair. He thought it was terrible. And so he went to the innkeeper and he said, it's just not right, the bed's too short. And the man said, no, 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 the bed's not too short. You're too tall. <laughs> and how often do we 
bruise our shins on the sharp edges of reality instead of cooperating with it. And what could he do about that? Well, complaining about it isn't going to make any difference. The bed's still going to be short. Maybe he can curl up into a fetal position. I don't know. Maybe he could take the, the mattress and put it on the floor. I don't know what he needed to do. But his idea that it's not fair didn't help anybody. And in your life, you can say, well, what am I going to do with my anxiety when I'm going through it? Now, a church is an organism, just as an individual is an organism. And when change is introduced to an, any organism, whether it's a church or a corporation or a person or anything, or family, anxiety comes up. And the anxiety is that limitation that you're pushing through. And it's not wrong to feel it, and it's not wrong to go through it. When you embrace what is, including the feelings you have, including the fear, but not let it stop you. And hopefully, you can process it and move through it faster. But even then, embracing it, embracing it and letting it be, when you are willing to accept what is, then you can move through it with grace. You can move through it in a beautiful way. And so the bed's not too short, you're too tall, but that doesn't mean that you're a victim. It doesn't mean you can't do things. It just frees you up to do the things that are yours to do. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And the things you can't change are what? The world of opinions and circumstances. What can you change? This. What's inside of you. The joy you bring to it. You know, I've shared many times the difference between happiness and joy. I once heard a unity minister, God bless him, he was well known at the time, saying, if you're not happy at all times, there's something wrong with you. And I thought, no, pal, there's something wrong with you. And I found out later there was. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't keep that going, but you can bring joy to every situation. Happiness is rooted in the same root words as happenings, happenstance. It's just happenings. It's just the things that are rising and the falling of life's experiences. But joy is the root word of jewel. It's something that has many facets. You see it from many sides, and you can bring your joy to it. It includes experiencing out and feeling the fears that are there. And when you, when you embrace the fears that are there, maybe journal them out, maybe move through them. What you're unlocking is a power, a, an incredible power. It's like you can ride the power of the unlocked energy when you embrace your fear like a surfer rides a wave. It's a power that moves you forward. It moves you through those situations. You know, it's great to pray for what you want, and you should pray for what you want, but you know, getting what you want does not make you happy. They've done studies where they found out that the richest people in the world are barely any happier than the average person, and that the people who've had amputations are barely any less happy than the average person, and the people who win the lotteries maybe have a little spike for six months, but it goes back to baseline. The thing that determines how happy you are, whether you're on this side or this side, is what you bring to it, what your spiritual practices are, how you manage your anxiety, and not buying into the world of appearances, how often do we really get to experience life as it is, reality as it is, and how often are we just living in our opinions of it? You know, I had a friend of mine, he was a unity minister, and he was driven, his church was going through a bunch of stuff, and, 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 and one day, um, it was his birthday, and his wife uh, 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 made him dinner, and he said, oh, what's for dessert? And she said, well, you just ate it. And he said, oh, what was it? It's apple, it was apple cobbler. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite. Did I enjoy it? I mean, he was so wrapped up in his head that he didn't experience it. How often do we miss the precious present? Because we're caught up in opinion or circumstance. Opinion is not going to give you anything. Happiness is not a function, true happiness. The true happiness is not a function of getting what you want. The happiness that you experience, or the joy, is in the process, or in the journey, as Megan's saying, of moving into the kind of person who can appreciate and experience your answer prayer. Not getting it. And you're not attached to whether or not that particular thing happens or not. And then you can appreciate it, and enjoy it, and then work with what happens regardless. This is what unconditional living is about. This is the most important thing there is. 
Everybody wants to get what they want. And sometimes it's good to get what you want, and sometimes it's better to want what you get. And sometimes the gap between getting what you want and wanting what you get, when you close that gap, what do you get? Joy. <laughs> and it's necessary in these times. In these times where people are living from their reptilian brain, their amygdala. Oh boy, here I go in my nerd talk again. But there's that part of yourself that is uh, firing off that is in that fear. And a good example of this was something that happened many years ago. Uh, a woman called me. She had been a member of my congregation, but she fulfilled her dream and moved to a beautiful mountain town in Appalachia and opened up a gift shop. And, and this was a fairly sophisticated town. There were resorts there, and, and she loved living there. But she called me. She says, I think I'm going crazy. You see, it was the day of the O.J. Simpson trial verdict. And she said... Everybody who comes into my shop today, and I mean everybody, is telling me that this verdict was in the book of Revelations and it was a sign of the end of times and that the blue helicopters from the United Nations are going to fly over yonder mountain and land here and take over. And she said, I just want to have a reality check. Am I crazy? I said, no. And she, she moved back. <laughs> so that's because the overactive amygdala the reptilian brain that has fear and the flight or fight, which was a nat natural and necessary part of human evolution, hijacks the higher neocortex and takes over. And even very intelligent people, have you noticed, live from their fears, but then they use, then the, that part of their brain hijacks their higher brain so they can use big long words to explain why they're that crazy. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the truth. So... How about in a family system such as a church? You know, this is a system. This is an organism. This is an organism. It's a, it's a whole system. And so there will be people within your system who will hold the space for the anxiety there. You may not be. You may not be a drama person. But somebody's going to be a drama person. And they're going to be in your space with an agenda or a drama or something. It's normal. It's normal. But then how do you manage your anxiety in the face of it? This church is not a big drama place. I've noticed that over the years, the last five years at least, it's been pretty peaceful. When change is introduced, of course anxiety rises, but you have the tools and the ability to get through with it and grow through it rather than be limited by it. And then let whatever anxiety comes up fuel you and move you forward. And so when you're faced with it, just thank you for sharing and don't get into it. Take our... our uh, our, our uh, treatment that we did, I rise above. This has nothing to do with me. I detach from this. I take none of this personally and just let it be. And that's, that's, that's the healthy way of dealing with it, as much as you can. And then you'll move through it with a beautiful way. So, let's, uh, let's take those affirmations again. You might want to apply them to something in your life that you're dealing with. Or this transition, this change. So take, take them right now. Take whatever it is that's in your mind, whatever you're dealing with, and whatever you're thinking about. And set aside what's in your hands. Just let it go. And just know, I rise above. None of this has anything to do with me. I detach from all of this. I take none of it personally. And lift up into that. I am from above. I am not of this world. Of appearances and circumstances. And move in it. Move with it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. And now take a deep breath and let it out. And move into this now moment. And just remember those words that Jesus said to the Pharisees. I am not of this world. You are of this world. I am from above. You are from below. And what he was talking about was he was not from the world of opinions and circumstances. He was from the higher truth, the reality, that presence of God that indwells every one of us, that beingness.
And so we begin by knowing, not just affirming. My beingness is my security. And no one can take it away from me. I stand in my beingness. I honor that part of myself. I am an intelligent being. And I can figure it out. No one can take away me from me. As we take another deep breath, we rest in our beingness and we open up to that possibility that there's something more. And we move with this prayer treatment, which, is, which opens up a space and lifts us from the lower self to the higher self from the below to the above. That moves us and detaches us from the circumstances of life and all the opinions. We recognize that reality exists independent of our opinions. And we want to move up into the real. And so we take this treatment, these words. I detach from all of this. I rise above. None of this has anything to do with me. I take none of this personally. And once again, I detach from all of this. I rise above. None of this has anything to do with me. I take none of it personally. And as we feel ourselves rising from the world of circumstances and opinions, we're in that clear space, that brighter room, that more expansive consciousness of love and peace and joy and plenty. By letting go of our attachments and lifting up into our true self, we recognize that we are not affected by anything we see. It has nothing to do with us. And we take nothing personally because we are beingness expressing. I am the presence of pure being. And where there's something in your life that you need to release, I detach from it, I lift up. None of it has anything to do with me, and I take none of it personally. And feel this freedom, this presence. statement is, I give from my infinite beingness and I receive abundantly. Together. I give from my infinite beingness and I receive abundantly. And alone, alone quietly. And again together. I give from my infinite beingness and I receive abundantly. And so it is. Amen.